Take time to deliberate. But when the time for action has arrived, stop thinking and go in. Napoleon Bonaparte. Welcome, everybody, to the Conservation Project. My name is Logan Bird, and this is the podcast for the average Joe who still believes in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that we are still one nation under God. Frankly, this is going to be a bit of an emotional episode because honestly, I'm just going to talk for a little while. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say other than that. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, it is 1.20 in the afternoon. It's August 26th, 2021. And yesterday when I recorded the first episode of this, I wanted it to be the beginning of something that I could start on track. Meaning I'd do the first episode and then the next, and it would follow an order and a specific way of guideline, basically how I imagined it would be. And, you know, life gets in the way. And proof of that is what is happening right now in Afghanistan. And the reason I decided to start recording this right now, and the reason that this episode 2 is going to be different than what I said it was going to be yesterday when I recorded episode 1, which is out live now, by the time this is being recorded, this is already out. The reason why I decided to do that is because I woke up this morning to a terrorist attack in Kabul, and I, I'm speechless. I'm angry, but I'm speechless. I have no comprehension of how we got here. How our administration let this happen. And yesterday I, I made the statement that I would not... I would not point fingers. I, I would not cast judgment where judgment is not due. Today... I can safely say that judgment is due. I will never berate and talk down on somebody for the way that they are or whatever it may be. But when when somebody's done something wrong, as I said, you know, when criticism is due, there will be criticism. I firmly believe that criticism is how people grow. However, what you're watching is 2013, I believe it was, 2013 Benghazi, on a larger scale, on a bigger stage, with the head of the free world. And I don't know, frankly, how to put those in these events into words that I can make sense of. And, and I'm going to, I'm fully free-forming this today. I, I've got some notes, um, but you know... I'm just going to talk for a little while. <laughs> and it's funny because after my uh, first episode, I, I have you know on my notes page, I, I have uh, a separate section that says episode notes. Basically things when I get done that I, um, that I critique myself on. And the first thing I said was more planning. I, I needed to plan it out a little bit better. And it's a little hilarious because this has, well, frankly, no planning at all. <laughs> and, you know, the thing is, I don't... Um, I don't feel bad about that. I really, I genuinely don't. And, and and let me tell you why. Like I said, life gets in the way. But I grew up around Marines. I've been talking to, today, to my cousin who is a Marine. He's retired, but he's a Marine. And he was my main inspiration growing up of why I wanted to join the military. He exemplified everything as a person, as a friend, uh, now as a father, as a wife, or a husband, pardon, um, everything that I felt like somebody who serves our country should be. I still believe that. And I reached out to him this morning after I heard everything going on. And as of, I believe, let me, I have it bookmarked right here. As of about 10 minutes ago, let's see, what's the time frame? Uh, about 10 minutes ago, there was an update that 60 have been killed, confirmed killed, in the explosions this morning. There have been, uh, let's see, as of 113, there have been 10 U.S. Marines, soldiers, killed in these bombings. There was multiple explosions. So, so far, I've read that two have been confirmed. 
but I couldn't help but feel angry. And, and, and frankly, I, I, God bless my girlfriend. She's had to talk me down because I wanted to get on here. And I, I honestly, I just wanted to rip this administration a new one. I, I didn't. I'm sitting here looking at what's happening on Twitter. I'm, I'm watching these live reports. I've got multiple news websites pulled up. All this, that, and the other. <laughs> and I just want to be angry. And I am angry. But I, I, I realize I've got to keep it under control. And I think that is the very hardest thing that I can do right now. But I'm going to have to do it anyways. And that's okay. But I cannot, for the life of me, make sense as to what I'm hearing right now. I believe it was yesterday, perhaps two days ago. I haven't, uh, they didn't have the date. I had the press briefing uh, from Jen Psaki up. Um, but I, I'm pulling a direct quote, a direct quote from our press secretary from WhiteHouse.gov. Quote, this is now on track to be the largest airlift in U.S. history. It is bringing American citizens out, our Afghan partners out. It's bringing our ally part, allied partners out. So no, I would not say that this is anything but a success. Now you let that one dwell for a moment. I, when I see this, and I have the travel gov. From the State Department. I have the State Department's travel.gov um, Twitter up right now. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this off. The first tweet is from 19 hours ago. The second tweet is from three hours ago. And the hashtag that both of these lead off with is Afghanistan. Rightfully so. And it says this. Due to threats outside the Kabul airport, U.S. Citizens, citizens should avoid traveling to the airport and avoid airport gates unless you receive instructions to do so. Those at the Abbey Gate, East Gate, or North Gate should now leave immediately. That was 19 hours ago. Okay? So let that one sit for a minute. I'm going to take a drink here. 19 hours ago. That did not reach mainstream news. That's coming from the State Department. This is the confirmed... This is the... The verified Twitter account. Three hours ago. And I'm sure these times are a little bit off because t Twitter doesn't update times very precisely. Regardless. Either way, if this was three hours ago, then they are way behind the ball. But three hours ago, there has been a large explosion at the airport and there are reports of gunfire. U.S. citizens should avoid traveling to the airport and avoid airport gates. Those at Abbey Gate, East Gate, or North Gate now should leave immediately. And I quote, so no, I would not say that this is anything but a success. That is coming from the mouthpiece of our executive office. Y'all, I'm struggling with this. I don't, I don't want to just blatantly speak ill. I really don't. But for the love of all that's holy. Who was it? Let me pull this up. Anthony Blinken. <laughs> Anthony Blinken said publicly that they are that any US citizens that are not out and there at the airport by the 31st are on their own. I'm paraphrasing, but I, I want you to look this up because he delivered these remarks to the press and a lot of these news outlets and shows and places like this, there even large large scale podcasts, they're they're uploading his, <laughs> they're they're uploading this video of him saying this, and I cannot, for the life of me, understand how they're getting past being outright scolded by the American public. I'm reading from his Twitter account. And it says, we're on track to complete our mission in Afghanistan by August 31st, provided the Taliban continue to cooperate and there are no disruptions. But let me be clear, there's no deadline on our work to help remaining U.S. citizens and Afghan partners who decide they want to leave to do so. I've never seen somebody openly and publicly, with 60,000 views on this one clip, 
contradict themselves so heavily. <laughs> I, first of all, they've already announced that it would take approximately 72 hours to get our military out of this area. Obviously, they're going to be the last ones in. It is August 26th, like I mentioned. It is August 26th. You do that math. You have today, tomorrow, and the next day at most before you really have to start pulling out our, our military. Now, I was never that good at math, but that, that seems pretty simple to me. I mean, that seems really simple to me. And you know what's hilarious is on the politics... On the politics section of Twitter, and I think most can agree that Twitter is, frankly, a dumpster fire. One of the trending hashtags right now is impeach Biden Harris now. And now I'm not going to go calling for nobody's resignation. I got no power to do that. I've got, I carry no weight in that for that. That's fine. Regardless of what I think, I think it is funny how it went from impeach Biden to impeach Biden Harris. And I am exactly emotional enough right now to go on Twitter, yada yada, anywhere, and be like, yes, Biden needs to be impeached. Get him out of office. And frankly, this is treason. I, I, I'm I'm just going to call it uh, call it what it is. This is treason by the President of the United States. It just, it, there, there's no beating around the bush. He's leaving American citizens to die, and he's laughing off reporters. Now, if you find me in a ditch somewhere, this is the reason. But let's look at the facts here. The mouthpiece for his administration, Jen Psaki, has said that this... So, no, I would not say that this is anything but a success. So, you've got that. You've got the fact that every time he gets on... Any sort of press, uh, press release or press or anything like that, President Biden takes no questions and he walks off. He talks about having contingency plans or developing contingency plans, but will not say what any of them are. And I understand why if you're trying to keep your cards close to the chest because, you know, we now trust the Taliban. We do negotiate with terrorists and we do leave men behind. That's that's the name of the game for this for this administration. And again, I'm casting no, I'm casting no stones, I'm, throw, I'm no judgment here, because that's not my place. But I am telling you what is happening right now, and I don't think people understand the gravity of this situation. Not just the fact that we have people in Afghanistan, we have people in a hostile environment, our citizens that are being left behind. It's the fact that we are openly and willingly saying that if. That they're changing the narrative. They're changing the language. You see, this is this is the thing. It started with very basic language. We're doing everything we can to get our people out of this place. Great. Exactly what needed to be said. And then it changed. Then it changed to, we're doing everything we can to get the people that want out, out. So you tell me where that lines up. You tell me what that means. And now, as of today, we have, uh, what's his name? Uh, John Kirby, I believe it is. I believe it's John Kirby. With uh, He's the Pentagon press secretary. Is that correct? I believe, yes, it is John Kirby. Saying openly, <laughs> openly, can you believe this? I'm going to pull it up. Yep. That we can confirm... Yeah, I'll just pull up his Twitter. Forget it. This is, and like I said, this is very, um, this is very off the cuff. I, I'm not, uh, like I said, I'm not, I'm not planning anything. Um, he's just constantly tweeting out that we'll continue to update. We'll continue to update. Five hours ago, evacuation operations in Kabul will not be wrapping up in the in 36 hours. We will continue to evacuate as many people as we can. Until the end of the mission. Again, with the language changing here. As many people as we can until the end of the mission. Okay. So they put a date on this quote-unquote mission. You know, th that right there. Those are the things that piss me off. 
Because until until the end of the mission. So you're holding on to this August 31st negotiated with the Taliban deadline. Let me get that straight. This is this is what we're doing now. We're doing this. <laughs> oh, this just breaks my heart. Continue to evacuate as many people as we can until the end of the mission. Now you know what? I'm just going to I'm just going to start scrolling through these because this is this is a level of asinine that I haven't I, I don't believe I've ever seen in my days. I, I mean, I I let me put it this way. And this, I don't recall who it was that said this. I really don't. Uh, but died in 9-11. I just, want to, I just want to throw this out there. 2,977 people were killed on September 11th, 2001. More than 6,000 others were injured. So, just to clarify, we are now on track to leave more people behind and in the hands of the same group that facilitated 9-11 than the people that died in 9-11. I just want want to get this straight right now. We are on track to leave more behind behind than those who died in 9-11. Let, let, that, let that sink in. I, 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 gotta, I gotta read this. Uh, I gotta read this that I, I took a screenshot earlier. And it just... Um, mm, it just got me a little bit. Because this is this is what I'm talking about right here. Why do we not have any direct numbers coming out of this administration? They can tell us. Antony Blinken and well, what's his face? John Kirby, the Pentagon C- press secretary, can tell us to the to the digit how many of our our active military have been vaccinated. They can tell us branch by branch each individual statistic, but they can't tell us how many people we've got left over there, how many American citizens. See, this is this is part of why I wanted to join the military when I was when I was young and and part of why I still have this this urge, because there is no nobler cause to be a part of than the group of people that if one man one woman is left behind in their service. We'll go back and get them. I sent this text this morning. I'm just going to read it off. And uh, I, I pulled this. Uh, I pulled this screenshot from, I believe, New York Magazine. And I sent this text. I said, I don't even understand this. This administration is just throwing out numbers. I thought we had approximately 15,000 of our people in there. Where is this 95,700 number coming from? And I'll get back to that. Are we taking in refugees at the rate of six and a half times the amount of Americans? And I'm, I'm going to read this clip from this. And uh, if I can find this direct link again, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Um, because it, it's, it's just important. It, it is just important. It, it might be Time Magazine. I, I, can't, I can't recall. I'm, I'm going to find it. I believe it is Time Magazine, though. But I, I, man, this is, it hurts. It, it, this, this hurts, this hurts to read. So this is an, an, a leak, a new leak from the state department with evacuation numbers. And this as is a three days ago, 1500 Eastern time. So three o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern time. Total manifested since midnight in Kabul. August 23rd, oh, and I just clicked off of it, stand by, since August 23rd, I, I can't even make sense of this, 483 American citizens, 6,425 Afghan nationals, eight third, uh, third country 
slash unknown for a total of 6,916. Total manifest, see, this is, this is where I get angry. Total manifested since this operation began, 4,400 American citizens, 21,533 Afghans, 642 TCNs for a total of 26,582. Okay. So, I did the math, and it's about 6.3 times, so just under 6.5 times, the amount of American citizens that refu Afghan refugees are coming out. Now, let me be the first to say, I did not, you know, obviously I did not work with any of these Afghan citizens, but I know that these, these the Afghan army, regardless of what our president wants to say about them not standing up for themselves, that's a bald-faced lie. First, first and foremost, that's just a straight-up lie. But there are interpreters, there are people who we've worked with, intelligence, whatever it may be, these Afghans that deserve the right to be able to get out. They worked with us, they put their lives on the line, and they're continuing to do so. They do deserve to get out. But I stand here right now, an American citizen that believes that we need to get our people out. And I don't feel like I'm alone with, with that. And that's the whole point of what this podcast is supposed to be. It's, it's, for, it's for the average Joe. And we have willingly left our people behind. And they are officially pulling numbers out of a hat. They just are. Because I'm going to read this other one. The U.S. military has said it would prioritize evacuating its troops, numbering about 5,200, in the two days before the deadline to leave. Hmm. Well, that's, that's a tight tolerance. Since the day before the Taliban swept into Kabul, the United States and its allies have mounted one of the biggest air evacuations in history, bringing out about 95,700 people, including 13,400 on Wednesday, the White House said on Thursday. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said there's at least 4,500 American citizens and their families that have been evacuated from Afghanistan since mid-August. All right, Blinken, where's the rest of these numbers? Did you lie to us and tell us how many people were there in the first place? What about the people on the outskirts of Afghanistan? What about the people away from Kabul itself? Because we know they're there. We know Canada had journalists there we know france and uk had their people there in much smaller quantities but what's to say ours aren't there do you have that information or can you only tell me how many people have had their second dose of the vaccine in our military branch by branch is that the only thing that you can tell me is that the only thing that you're responsible to tell the american citizens because i don't feel like that's the case i refuse to believe that somebody in that kind of position can intentionally be that vague and that cryptic without having some sort of ulterior motive. I don't understand that. Because roughly this started around the 15th. I'm reading this directly, <laughs> directly from Time Magazine. Because this is, you know, you, you take what you want from mainstream media. Because, you know, there's a lot of people on the right who claim that left stream, or mainstream media is in the pocket of the left. And when they do stuff like this, I can't help but think that maybe that's probably true. It's kind of hard to believe. When they shill for such ham-fisted handling of a barbaric 7th century group of murderers. And I'm going to read this straight from Time Magazine. You take what you want from it. The administration has been working overtime to ensure it doesn't. And this is in regards to a quote. If we fail in that commitment, I think it will further undercut our credibility. Hmm. We'll give it away. Since August 14th, 70,000 people have been evacuated from Afghanistan, Biden said on Tuesday. The Pentagon told reporters that as of August 23rd, 4,000 American passport holders have been evacuated. And that's that number I just read a, a moment ago. 500 under what uh, Antony Blinken said. 4,000 American passport holders have been evacuated. The administration has also asked six air, airlines to supply 18 aircraft for additional assistance. By the way, go look that up. 
I'm going to leave that for you to do. Go look that up. Those airlines who supplied these aircraft, good on them. Great. But I want you to look at these pictures that have surfaced from these these people boarding these airlines. There was one that took off, and I saw a picture. I believe it was a 747. And there, it was one of those that had like four seats in the middle, three seats on each side. So a large plane. I saw a picture come from that. Five people were on that plane. And that plane departed. Final sentence from this. The goal Biden set on August 20, uh, 20th is to ensure, quote, any American who wants to get home will get home. See, there's that language again. We're doing this, we're doing this again. Any American who wants to get home will get home. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you hear me laugh, and I, I don't mean this in a, in a I don't laugh in a uh, lighthearted or joking sense. Please, please do not take it as such. The reason I laugh is because I don't know what else to do. And I think I think I've I think I've narrowed down on why personally this is such a big deal for me. Military has always been a big deal for me. The support of our military has always been a big deal for me. Be it friends, family, otherwise, uh, you know, I've got a very personal and close connection to a lot of people, and I've it's just what I've been around for so long. But the reason I love our military from a baseline standpoint is that these were the people who went and were willing to put their lives on the line. And now, as of right now, we have 10 Marines that are dead because of this Benghazi, this Saigon-level garbage that is happening due to no one else who can take the blame other than Joe Biden. President Joe Biden is the reason that this is happening. This isn't me bashing somebody. This is factual. He was advised by members of the national intelligence groups. He was advised by multiple... This is, this is public knowledge. This is not like some insider thing or this is not speculation. He has been advised from the start of this that the choice he made to do a full-scale immediate evacuation was the wrong decision, that there would be consequences to the way he felt that he should handle it. And what do you know? We're watching it happen. So, this is what you get. It was a ham-fisted way of handling it. Now, am I going to sit here and tell you that we needed to have troops in there still that we did not need to pull out. Listen, no, I think just about every single person that served says that it was that we wanted out. And I don't think you have to be, I don't think you have to have served to carry that sentiment. I, I don't, but you know, here, here's the thing. Everybody wanted us out of there. And I think that's something that the left and right can agree on. And there's not much middle ground that they find nowadays. Especially if you narrow yourself into a more specific zone like Christian conservative or anything like that. But I feel like that's one thing that we can agree on. But we still make it contentious. Go on Twitter and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, I mean to a T. You'll, you'll literally see exactly what it is I'm speaking about. But this is not the way we were, we needed to handle this. And I love it when I hear people say, well, this is what Trump was going to do. Yeah, Trump did set a date for us to pull out of Afghanistan. And if you want to speak in general, just overarching generalities, Trump and Biden both made the right decision to pull out. But you see how ignorant that statement is? Do you see how careless and dangerous that statement is it's not a full scale thing it is now but there was a reason that part of Trump's plan was a trickle it wasn't just a full scale pullout that we now have as of this moment because of the choices this administration has made we have more people more of our people our military there right now than we did beforehand we had 2,500 there, active 
stationed there in Afghanistan, the first thing, when this all hit the fan, the first number that this office, this administration pushed was 3,000 3, soldiers to go over there. That alone was a red flag that I don't know why people didn't jump out at. And then it became 5,000, and then it became 6,000, and now I've stopped keeping up with that number. I do know we have both Marines, Rangers, 82nd Airborne, which... We have all these people there. And... (laughs) We're letting it happen. And, you know, we're letting things come to us. Why is that? Why are we letting this go unnoticed? I don't... I don't know how to make sense of that. I, I... I just, I can't, I don't know, I can't, I can't, I can't make any sense of it. And this is not how I thought episode two was going to go. I had mentioned that my buddy was going to be on here. Unfortunately, he got sick. If he, uh, it's not COVID or anything, he's confirmed everything's fine on that end. (laughs) This is not how I thought this was going to go. And it breaks my heart that I've spent so much time being angry today. Because this is not who who we were meant to be. But this is this is the bottom line. I I felt like it this was the what the podcast was meant to be. This right here. Normal people speaking out about what's going on and what's going wrong. I, I'm broken hearted today. I, I sit here broken hearted and I, I'm at a loss. I'm completely at a, at a loss. I cannot believe, and this is from MSNBC. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's right. MSNBC intelligence analyst Malcolm Nance downplayed a su- this is the headline downplayed a suicide bombing outside of Kabul, telling his nearly one million Twitter followers to quote deal with it. This is the tweet. I'm reading this directly. <laughs> Twenty years, FYI, there have been terrorist suicide bomb- bombers killing civilians nearly daily in Afghanistan. This ain't new. It's why we're leaving. Hashtag deal with it. You. You can't make this up. You cannot make this up. I. (laughs) What are you supposed to say to that? You know, my, uh, my dad sent me something the other day. And, uh, we, you know, I, there's a reason I like to start every episode with a, uh, with a quote. And I kept telling myself I was not going to throw more and more in it. I really wanted, as much as I love quotes, I wanted it to be one at the end and then a Bible verse to finish off with. But he sent me this the other day. I believe it was two days ago. And boy, if this doesn't hit the nail on the head, it's Thomas Sal. Sewell. Sal. Yeah. Either way. It is usually futile to try to talk facts and analysis to people who are enjoying a sense of moral superiority in their ignorance. And you know what? He's right. He, he's, I, I mean, he's absolutely right. He, you can't discuss anything in this realm who, in, in any sort of way, you cannot discuss this with anybody who still stands for what this administration is doing and still believes that it is, that it is correct, that this is noble, that this is right, that this is the way we should be heading. Uh, Noah Rothman, associate editor uh, at MSNBC, NBC News contributor, 
um, the Commentary Magazine. He's the author of uh, Unjust, Social, Social Justice and the Unmaking of America. He tweeted something out uh, about 1 o'clock, right before I started this. And you know what? This is such heavy-handed language, but um, I agree with him. He said this, I know it's going to take some time for those of you who have crafted an identity around the po policy preference we're seeing playing out in all its nightmarishly gruesome horror. But in the meantime, try not to project your insecurities onto those of us who warned you. And let's be honest, it, I, that, that's the end of it, th those of us who warned you. He's right. You can be mad all day long, but he's right. I don't understand at all how in the midst of this, we're still focused on things like vaccination numbers in our military. The same people who are supposed to be standing up right now in front of cameras, in front of audiences, in front of the press, telling us what's happening to our Americans that are trapped in a hellhole are still talking about vaccination numbers in the military. They're still talking about screenings and... All this kind of stuff. None of this. Listen, I get that it matters. Genuinely, I, I want I want to make this clear. I understand that these numbers matter, especially right now with the rise of Delta. Gotcha. Cool. Bigger fish to fry. Now that's that's probably a pretty southern thing, but hey, I can't help it. But bigger fish to fry. <laughs> it, it just it, it just is. Uh, I. Don't understand how, you know, I, I mentioned this in episode one. Stay, sometimes it's time to stand up. And, you know, I don't get how we are in a position where the things that are going viral right now, the things that are going viral right now is this headline nurses are quitting because of COVID-19 burnout causing a mass shortage quote I yell at God I yell at myself I yell at COVID and cry I have nothing nothing but the utmost respect for the nurses and these people who are putting them their lives and their and their families and these hours that they're working on the line I, <laughs> it's time to stand up. It's time to make your decisions. It's time to stand up for what you believe. But we got people being murdered. And, you know, we, we've cast these stones, especially with COVID. We, we have cast these stones about masking our children. About vaccination numbers, about vax, no vax, and, and, and all this kind of stuff. Whether or not people are fighting about masks. And you know what? That's for a later episode. That's what episode two was originally supposed to be about. With people far more credible, specifically a person far more credible than me about all of this. But we have left people to die. I don't understand... I don't understand the people that are still shilling for what this administration is doing. And, you know, I, I hate Twitter, but, you know, I, I have one um, because of this podcast. And, and I'm, I'm not even going to plug that right now. I don't, I don't even care. But one of the things that's trending right now is where is Joe Biden? And I will never, I will never understand this. This is a direct quote. 4,000 likes, 1,000 a a thousand retweets. To the people wondering where is Joe Biden, he is in the situation room strategizing next steps for our country, not posting insane tweets or making empty threats from behind a podium. First of all, get off your high horse. 
Because everything you just said was nonsense. And I'm calling you out. This page is called Really American One. It's nonsense. They're still talking about MAGA. They're still talking about trust the science. And he, whoever this is, this page is spouting nonsense. He is in the Situation Room strategizing next steps for our country, not posting insane tweets or making empty threats from behind a podium. Remember, ISIS is the enemy, folks. You voted for the person who put us in this position. We tried to warn you. Make no mistake there. We tried to warn you. But all you can do is do anti-Trump pop propaganda. He's living rent-free in your freaking head. And you choose to get on Twitter and you tweet about that. You've got no clue what's really happening. If you genuinely think that he is in the city, and this is your focus, strategizing next steps for our country, not posting insane tweets or making empty threats from behind a podium, what do you think he's been doing? He's been threatening America. He's been threatening citizens. The first thing he said when F the FDA approved the Pfizer vaccine is that it's now time for you to use this as reasoning, as, as a business owner, as reasoning to force your employees to get vaccinated or suffer the consequences. He said that. Make no mistake that this administration does not care about your health. If they did, they would have handled this entirely different. Strategizing next steps for our country, that's a, that's a lie. Because if he was, he would have been spending the last three weeks doing a full-scale pullout and then leaving people to die. Leaving men, women, and children to die. Leaving women to be raped and killed and literally killed in the streets. There's video of it happening right now. On the internet. But you have the gall to stand behind this. The fact that people think Trump put it. I, I am not a Trump supporter. I, I, I will make this very clear. I'm sure as I'll get out not a Biden supporter. But man Trump had some things right. And yeah I wish he would have shut up on social media. But. The fact. That we are at a position where we now negotiate with terrorists. And people are okay with that. I, I can't make sense of that. People are shilling for the way he is handling this. And, and they want to use that picture of, of Biden from, uh, what, about a week ago, a week and a half ago, of him sitting in the situation room with the, sitting in front of the TVs. First of all, the clocks are wrong. <laughs> you know... If you're, I'm just going to be frank here. If you're going to BS your way through a conversation, a public post, at least give it like half effort because you didn't, you, 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 you just didn't, you didn't even try. And, and I'm, I'm not some conspiracy theorist that thinks, you know, he's doing this or he's doing that to just make, f no. It, it, okay. Whatever. I... How? How do you stand there right now and you openly with a straight face can look and I'm, I'm looking at the video right now. This is from the attack in Afghanistan. I, I am watching it. You can hear it in the background. You, this is a man crying as he's walking over dozens of dead bodies. And this is this is one of the hardest things I have ever watched. I don't understand how you can still back this. I, I don't. Many of you are familiar with David Harris Jr. Uh, he's very, very popular in the social world. He's a uh, he's an author. He's a speaker. Um, it, it, honestly, he has been on top of everything that's been happening in this, and he's been getting sh stuff shut down because he's posting stuff that's. Very graphic content. And you know what? Yeah, people need to see it. Sorry. Don't really care if it makes you nauseous. But you turning a blind eye to it is not what standing up is. 
And I think we discussed that yesterday. That's not what it is. If in a moment of fear you have chosen to sit rather than stand, you have already lost. I, today, I am at a loss. And David Harris Jr., he posted this video that I just played with the caption, Americans are getting killed. Our Afghan friends and children are getting killed. And my intel is telling me that, there is, that it's only going to get worse and that the Barron Hotel where the Americans were was also bombed. And where is Biden? Hiding in his basement? This is not a political issue. American lives are at stake. A real leader would have all hands on deck to assess, plan, and execute orders to get our Americans home. And if you have not seen it, go on whatever social media outlet you use and look up Jocko Willink. He's a retired SEAL. He did about a three and a half minute video about what he would say if he was president. Obviously, he's not. But it's what needs to be said from this ham-fisted, spineless administration that we have got ourselves stuck in, surrounded by people who support a brainless, mindless way of handling things and that are choosing to persecute people like you and me who go to our nine-to-fives, who go to our classes, and then come home and be with our families, who go to church on Sundays. We're the real enemy. We're the people who are blamed for the quote-unquote insurrection on January 6th. I'm not, this is not a call to action. This is a call to prayer. This is a call to stand up for what you believe in and stand up for the God-given rights that you have. That's it. That's what matters. That's the most important part. Second Corinthians 4.16 So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. I'm going to leave it at that. Because there's a lot of people right now. I've been talking to a lot of people all day about how heavy everything is right now for them. To the points of nausea. I, I, I get it. I, I have been more upset today than I have probably been the easily top three times in my life <laughs> you know what i mean like this is it's horrible so do not lose heart though our outer self is wasting away our inner self is being renewed day by day fight the good fight that's what we talked about yesterday second corinthians 4 16 look it up think about it study it that's all i've got i could go on for a while but at this point i would just be rambling Anyways, that's all I got. That is all I've got. Look at that verse. Think about it. Take that quote. Think about it. My name is Logan Bird. Thank you for listening to the Conservation Project, the podcast, the podcast for the average Joe who still believes in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that we are still one nation under God.